another book review, and actually, this is a three for the price of one book review. That's how awesome it's gonna be. Today we have the good, the cute, and the ugly. Yes. Today we are going to be looking at some graphic novels, which I picked up from my library. Yes, they are all library copies. Just calm. Be calm. I don't buy books unless I know I like them. This is how it works around here. But as some of you may know, I have been making an effort to try to get more into graphic novels. I have this problem, which may or may not be related to my dyslexia where I will start to read a graphic novel and if it has a lot of words in it, I will start either ignoring the pictures and reading only the words or ignoring the words and looking at only the pictures. Usually the second one. And I'll just try to figure out the story by the pictures because I am really a very visual person and I am very much into visual storytelling. So that's what happens. But I really want to get into more graphic novels and so I decided to check out a few more. Two of them are kind of randomly. I saw them at my library and I grabbed them and one of them was a suggestion from another booktuber. We're gonna start, we're gonna start with the bad and go to the good, all right? So first of all, we have Return to Labyrinth. Not Return to the Labyrinth, Return to Labyrinth. Some of you may be familiar with the Labyrinth movie by Jim Henson, and it is an amazing movie with David Bowie, and I loved it and still love it to this day, and so I was always interested, I knew that this existed, and I was interested in checking it out and seeing if it was any good. The premise is one that often has been explored in a lot of fanfiction, and even I have thought about exploring in my own fanfiction, and that is, um, what if Toby, the baby, still has some right to the labyrinth as, like, its prince because of his time that he spent with Jareth, and Jareth deciding to, like, adopt him as his son. Kinchu is being really, really obnoxious today. I hope it's all right with everyone. She's just gonna do this while we talk. So that sounds like a really cool premise, right? And I was interested to see what this graphic novel would do with it. Unfortunately, while the cover is very pretty, the rest of the book is not. <sighs> the characters are really terribly drawn. All of the recognizable characters are so poorly done that they're barely recognizable. I can't recognize Sarah at all. Don't get me started about Jareth. Like, did nobody, did they decide they didn't have the rights to David Bowie's image or something and so they just drew in this sort of vaguely effeminate anime guy? Probably. I'm betting that's probably what happened. It could look too much like David Bowie. But everything is in black and white and drawn so poorly that I feel like I could have done it and I could have done it better. The majesty of the labyrinth is completely not captured by the illustrations in this, and that's just part of the problem. The other part of the problem is the story and the characters. It's all bad, guys. There's not a, a single redeeming thing about this. I read this with a, like a permanent grimace on my face, because everything about this is utter shit. There are two female characters who are super attractive because, you know, we gotta have hot girls in our goblin labyrinth. And the oddness of the labyrinth is totally lost in all of the characters. The most they do is make really bad puns. And well, yeah, that did occur in the original Labyrinth movie. That wasn't all that there was. There was an unpredictableness and a weirdness to the Labyrinth from the movie that is completely lacking from the graphic novel, just completely lacking. Oh my gosh, Kinshu, would you settle down? Settle down. Settle down. I'm just gonna watch her like molest my chest area with her face because I guess that's what we're here for. Alrighty then. So yes, Jim Henson's Return to Labyrinth Big old shitstorm. Don't read it, especially if you're a fan. I don't know why you would read it if you weren't a fan of the movie. If you are a fan of the movie, it'll make you want to punch kittens. It's really terrible. If you're interested, I also have a written review of it on my Goodreads. Links in the doobly-doo. Next up, we have The Cute which would be Hilda and the Midnight Giant. This was another just sort of impulse one that I grabbed from the library uh, because it just looked, it looked cute and it looked like it would have a lot of, of pictures in it versus having a lot of words. And it kind of did and it kind of didn't. 
Um, this one is definitely for a younger audience, and that's fine. We're all about, you know, reading all kinds of things here, so that's fine. It's also not the first book in the series. There are many Hilda books. This is just the one that I got, but definitely check more of them out if, you're, if it interests you. It is the story of a little girl who lives in the country in this, like, sort of magical land with her mother, and she starts discovering that the world that she lives in is not as it seems and she and her mother have managed to antagonize some creatures that they didn't even know existed and she also discovers that there are other creatures that didn't know she existed and it's really it's a story about perception and how we humans and how everyone tends to think that they are the center of the universe when in reality there's so much more going on that we can't even see or don't even bother to grasp. It's told in a very simple and straightforward way and even children will be able to easily understand the message in this story. The illustrations are really cute. The characters are cute and fun. The details are interesting if pretty simplistic. The design is very steady throughout. Versus in the Labyrinth where you had characters going off model every other page. In this one the characters are very consistent and well drawn. Story-wise, as I said, it's very simple and I didn't love it. And there is a lot of talking where there could just be visual storytelling and I wish there wasn't. The characters are pretty standard and while this book is creative, I wouldn't say it is the most original or most creative thing I've ever seen. It's just cute, enjoyable, light, and obviously very, very quick to read. Can't you got one of her hairs in my mouth? That's fun. And the final book, which is The Good, is the one that was suggested to me by a fellow booktuber who I have forgotten the name of. I'm sorry, I should have looked before I started this video, but future me put names. Links will be in the doobly-doo to their channel. This book is obviously called The Arrival, and it is told completely with illustrations. There is no dialogue in this, and I love it. I love it so much. I am such a visual person, and all of the art and the style in this are really very excellent. The art style is purposely kind of black and white and sepia tones because it is trying to evoke like a silent film. And the story that it tells is the immigrant's journey. Any immigrant going anywhere could relate to this story. And I am not an immigrant, I have never immigrated anywhere, but this book really made me feel great empathy and really helped me relate to the kid, the main character without ever reading them speaking a word. It is amazing and it is touching and it made me tear up sometimes. And the art is just astounding. My only problem with this book was that it ended. And I was super sad that it was over. But you really have to experience it for yourself. I really cannot describe to you the beauty of this book. It's more of an experience than it is a book, if you ask me. So definitely, definitely check out The Arrival if you get a chance. As with The Labyrinth, both Hilda and The Arrival have reviews by me that are on Goodreads as well. So feel free to, again, check that out. Goodreads, links in the doobly-doo. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on three graphic novels that I have read recently. If you have any suggestions for graphic novels for me, please comment below and let me know. I'm especially looking for things that have really beautiful art and a limited amount of words. I really am looking for stuff that is very visual. So if you have any thoughts, drop them below for me. Bam! Like that. Like that. Like Kinshu. Just pointing at Kinshu. She is insane right now. What, did you get coffee at some point? Is that what is happening? Why are you molesting me? I thought we were friends. Very close friends, apparently. And as always, if for some reason you like what you've seen here, don't forget to share it with your friends. Kinshu says share or she will go even more crazy than she already is, and that's pretty crazy. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next time for whatever that video happens to be. Bye!